Hello, soil lovers and regenerators. My name is Ray Miladoni and I'm from farmingsecrets.com, a community of soil health education. And today I'm joining you from Victoria, Melbourne, Australia. And I thought instead of doing this from my apartment, um, I thought I'd come down to the local park and uh, come live to you from, uh, you know, some of my surroundings, getting a little bit more in tune with nature. This year, in fact, my theme for the year is let nature be my teacher. And for someone who is already quite in tune with the way that the soil works and the, and the health and the um, ecosystem of the planet, um, I really just want to dig that little bit deeper. Um, and that pun was intended uh, to just explore a little bit more what it is like to sit with nature and let nature be my teacher. And there's quite a lot online about that. But um, today I just wanted to um, share with you and say thank you for joining along with this uh, summit. And it's been really uh, exciting to be part of this. Uh, the whole regen movement and the regenerative agriculture, you know, uh, regenerative farming, uh, soil health, it has absolutely changed over the last 24 months. And pandemic has definitely um, fast-tracked everyone really questioning the way that our food system uh, has been created and the way that um, the food is designed to nourish the body, not just be something uh, consumed. And so quality is definitely meaning more than quantity now and in the, in the future. And so I'm really excited. So first of all, I just wanted you to sit with yourself for you know 10 to 15 seconds and just really acknowledge your surroundings. Obviously, I'm in a place that's got a little bit more elements of nature and you may hear some of the birds chirping and the wind blowing. Don't let that be a distraction. Let that be part of the beautiful world that we live in, the world that we all have the ability to really heal at the moment. So I just want you to sit with that and just really think about one thing that you can hear. Maybe if you're near a window, you can look outside and see some of nature or maybe the wooden table that you're sitting on uh, was once uh, nature. It's all about just being really present um, to your, your surroundings, something that we don't really do much of these days. And that's what I've really enjoyed about the regenerative movement. So I wanna just share a little bit about my story and plant a couple of ideas um, that you can possibly explore over the next 12 months. You know, really make 2021 or this year, whichever year you're watching this video in, the year that you embrace the regenerative agriculture. It's all about improving and making things better. I am definitely on a mission to leave this planet better than the way that I found it. Now, is no fault of anyone's to the way that the planet is. It's not a it's not a blame game. It's really about an accountability and going, well, this is the situation that we have in front of us. And we either choose to raise up and uh, explore a solution, or as we like to call it at Farming Secrets, a soil solution, because a lot of the solutions start within the soil. And I saw a, a great quote the other day, which is, we don't feed plants, we feed the soil that then feeds the plants. And unfortunately, over the last you know few decades, we've gone through this industrial revolution, which is all about bigger, faster, better, and it's all input driven. It's all about inputting something and having some magic growth hormone create the perfect apple or the perfect tomato or, you know, the most colorful, uh, rich food. And when it comes to growing, but no one really focused on nutrition, taste, it's all been lost. You know, the taste of food has gone out the window, uh, and what has mattered is how fast it grows, the yield we can get, the quantity, the perfectionness of the, 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 the fruit. And so today I just want you to stop and think about what does food taste like and how is that different to what our ancestors ate? Are we forgetting that taste matters when it comes to food? And I really want you to think about this year as being the year that you prioritize the taste of your food. Is the food that you're eating nourishing or is it just something that's been grown with the perfect seed, with the perfect fertilizer, with the perfect um, system to create yield and profit and not wholesome food? And so the reason why I bring that up is because we need to know 
where we've come from and the system that we have today is by no fault to anyone um, apart from just the way that the system has unfolded. You know, everyone had the right intentions. They wanted to grow more food to feed more people. It was definitely a problem that the world was facing many decades ago is we need to feed more people. And now we have this dilemma where we've degraded our planet. Our soils are the most degraded that they've ever been. And maybe 20, 30 years ago, when Farming Secrets was just, you know, forming itself, and I'll tell you a little bit about our history and Helen and Hugo, the co-founders of Farming Secrets and how I've kind of come into the ecosystem a little bit later. But this stuff about regenerating the soil and healing the planet was crazy thoughts. And now I wake up, you know, early parts of 2021 and there are posts all over the internet about healing the planet and going back to basics and thinking about, you know, regenerative agriculture and making this year the year that you explore regenerative um, way of living. It's not just about the food and the soil, but it's about just repairing everything. Um, I'm a big believer that, you know, the soil health is then transferred into the plant health. And then the plant is more resilient and grows more nutrient-dense food. And then the food is more healthy. And then we consume that food and then that increases our body's function and our gut bacteria. And the amount of research that's happening now around the gut bacteria and the mental health um, uh, side of, of that connectivity, which then just proves that we are technically connected to the soil. And so if we have toxic soil, then we're going to have toxic minds. And toxic minds make toxic decisions. So this circle and this pattern does need to be broken. And we are in this beautiful space now where we have this opportunity. And that's what's drawn me. A couple of years ago, my theme word was regenerative. Um, a few years before that, it was sustainability. And I've gone through this pathway of realizing that sustainability of a broken system continues to give us a broken system. And so that thinking of me exploring what sustainability meant many moons ago and a lot of the businesses that I've been around are all been around sustainability and going green. And unfortunately, that's all been greenwashed a little bit. But the realization was that it's good to be sustainable, but if it's a broken system, do we really want to sustain a broken system? You know, if you're unhealthy, do you want to sustain being unhealthy? And I guess the logical answer to that is no. We want to repair our body. We want to, you know, rejuvenate our soul. We want to improve our planet and repair it and heal it. And I use the word healing because the planet is, the, you know, the common denominator that's existed throughout all the different ages. It's resilient. It will always win. And we either choose to play with it and heal together or we just keep resisting it. And who knows what the outcome is of that may be. When we have companies exploring civilizations on other planets and we get angry because we want them to focus on planet A, we have to think about why are they abandoning planet A? What have we done to make planet B a more viable financial goal? And I'm not here to take sides, but we also have to think about where we've come and the decisions that we've created and take responsibility. And it's not about them or us. It's really about just a sense of ownership, and um, so I realise you know it's. Me. I think sometimes we can get stuck in this who was responsible, and I think this more better way of approaching this is what can I do to make my planet, the world that we live in, a better place, and that definitely has a ripple effect um, because we are teachers of the people who are around us, and so. I just want to quickly show you a bit of a diagram because I just feel like. Um, I've, I've spoken about sustainability and um, and and um, that. Let me I'll just share my iPad here. So the reason why I want to talk about this diagram is because what we have at the moment is a situation where over the years, so the the this side here, this side here is. Um, Regenerative, uh, uh, sorry, regenerative up here and degradative down here. Excuse my handwriting, that is horrible. Um, but if we just think about this as regenerative and down here is degradative, and this is a timeline. And so what's happened over the years is we've, we started above 
you know, zero. And we, we had a planet and we, we wanted to grow more food and the population grew. And over the years, this is no new, um, this is no new science. Like we know that we're losing topsoil faster than topsoil has ever been lost. Every rain, the flood washes topsoil away, um, you know, disturbing our soil means that the sun is baking the microorganism and um, killing the, the, back, the, the bacteria that exists in our soil that creates healthy soils. The, um, our, our soils are not able to produce the quality of food that it once used to be able to do. You think about a rainforest, like no one is disturbing a rainforest, yet everything is growing, it's luscious, it's you know, always got good humidity, um, has a good climate, and things t- tend to thrive. But we get in, we humans want to be smarter than nature and we bring in machinery and chemicals and um, we, we try and create shortcuts, which actually then causes this soil degradation. And then we, on the flip side, uh, we can identify at a certain point that our soils are no good and we can regenerate the soil. And that's what this, this green line is. What I was talking about before with sustainability is that at any point along this timeline, we can decide to be sustainable and that's just going to create a flat line of whatever system we currently have. And so if it's a regenerative model and our systems are okay and we decide to be sustainable, then we sustain that. But I think what a lost opportunity when we could maybe improve that even more. On the degradative side, we we just keep going down and down. It's a little bit of a vicious circle of, of, getting poor results and then needing more inputs or more labor or more machinery, um, trying to push for more yields. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're profitable because the more yields could mean that there was more costs incurred to make those more yields, which then means as a business model, we're not actually actually profitable. But what I want to highlight is what I call the regenerative gap. And so it doesn't matter where on this timeline you are, there's always going to be a gap. Now, if if your soils are here, this is the purple line, then your gap to move to a regenerative model is much smaller. If you decide to go regenerative down here, then your gap to whatever point, even if it's the sustainable line, is much bigger. And so this is the regen gap that I like to call. So the decision is really yours along where on that timeline you decide to make this regenerative journey a thing, a lifestyle a habit, a way of thinking, a mindset. It doesn't happen overnight, but there's going to be that aha moment. And being around Farming Secrets for the last two years and hearing many of the stories that has come up, it's been really interesting to see the people who were early adopters embracing regenerative agriculture 10 years ago and now mentors and leaders in this industry that people are turning towards and saying, teach me your ways. Show me what you have done. But 10 years ago, that were the crazy ones. People were thinking, that's not going to work. You can't think about soil health and that's going to make plants. It's all about NPK. You need to put the inputs in. That's what the science says. You know, the research labs were funded by the companies to prove that their stuff works. And of course it works in a lab environment. But then we have Mother Nature and there's floods and droughts, natural disasters, bushfires, that changes everything. So I really want you to just think about where are you on that lifespan, that that life cycle, and think about if not now, then when? Because every year, every cycle that that degradation happens, the gap gets wider, bigger. And so it doesn't matter if it's a 30 year down the, you know, you can't sit there and go, I should have done this 30 years ago because the next best time is today. Like don't let it get another 10 years down the track and then decide to start regenerating the soil. Just think about a way that you can move on that way of living today. And that leads me on to my next point. And I mentioned this word before, regenerative agriculture and living a regenerative lifestyle is an absolute lifestyle. And it's a never ending lifestyle as well. Often I'm speaking to farmers and they say, well, how do I know that my farm is regenerative? And I don't think we ever really have, um, the ability to go, yep, you tick these five boxes, so you're a regenerative farmer. And then go, that's it, your job's done. Because I feel like just the way as we have to be healthy of our body, it's a continual journey. It's every bit of food that we eat. 
matters. Every bit of walk that we do matters. If we decide to go to the gym, it matters. Now you can stop that and you go, now I'm happy with my health levels and my body and my weight level or whatever you want to use as a metric. But you could always do more. You could always be healthy. Now we don't want you to fall in this trap of going, you know, always being more regenerative. But it is definitely not a destination. It's a journey. It is definitely a mindset. And one of the things that I've explored over the many years of working with Farming Secrets and working with uh, farmers who are transitioning into a regenerative agriculture model or holistic management, uh, whatever that be, whether it be with grazing of animals, whether it be cover cropping, uh, whether it be, you know, cover cash crops or just cash crops. Um, it doesn't matter your business model because what happens is when you start changing your mindset, other opportunities arise. Uh, I'm sure most of you would know Joel Sullivan. Uh, he's been a big advocate of this movement for a very long time. He refers to himself as the lunatic farmer because that's what he was told he was back in the day. And now people are paying him to be on TED Talks and stages and, and go to events to share his wisdoms. He's written many books. Um, but the one thing that always stood out from, from his, his way is stacking enterprises. When you run a regenerative farm and you have a holistic model, people from all over the place want to come and visit and see how you raise the animals, how you grow your food, how you process it. Um, people with tiny houses or short-term accommodation will want to come and stay on your farm. People will volunteer to give you labour in exchange of experience when you uh, have a farm like this. We don't see that same um, calling of people lining up on industrial agriculture, farm lot type of monoculture farm. So it's just not that interesting. And so your business model then really does become about profitability because you're able to make more profit per acre by stacking other enterprises, by opening the door on new solutions, by bringing interns in who want to learn a more holistic, regenerative, planet healing, soil health method to farming and growing amazing nutrient dense food. And so it's not a model of, you know, can this be done? It's just more about deciding as a mindset, when do you want to start this journey? And if you're someone who doesn't have access to land, because I don't. And so the regenerative journey for me has been more of an education process. It's all been, it's all been about what can I learn to be impactful to people who do have access to land. I, um, you know, I'm not able to, you know, grow large amounts of food, but I'm doing the best I can with an apartment balcony that I have. It's nothing to rave about and be amazed by, but it's just changing the mindset of thinking about the food cycle and where food's coming from and being excited when the first tomato appears or when the cucumber is growing or picking some fresh herbs to put into your cooking. It's all about mindset. But as someone who might be an eater or a consumer of food and not a grower, then I challenge you to really explore where your food's coming from. Do you know the farmer? Can you visit the farm? Can you book yourself a farm tour? Can you be, you know, thinking about the food uh, chain? And is it one that supports local businesses and bring back that farming community into your local area? That is a regenerative lifestyle. It might be about meditating more, it might be about being more connected to the planet. Like choosing to run this session in an environment outside is aligned with being more of a regenerative human being and so don't sit there and think well i don't have access to land i can't play in this regenerative movement because the regenerative farmers are actually responding to consumer needs the organic movement grew so quickly because people were demanding organic food and regenerative is the next layer to that why stop at organics there's a word in australia and i was quite surprised when talking to some of my American and European counterparts, that this movement of something being more organic, so not just organic, but more organic, like even more than organic, like forget about the certification and all the red tape. It's, I've got an open door policy. Come onto my farm, have a look at the way that I grow my food and you decide whether you want to buy products from me. The food system was definitely shaken up over the COVID and pandemic um, few months and it's still quite escalating right around the world and that proves that the food model is broken we cannot feed 
billions of people, seven or eight billion people right now, close to nine billion soon, with the current model that we have. It relies on way too many mileages. It relies on too many, um, uh, what's the word? There's too many uh, bottlenecks, restriction points, key people that own the whole network. And if that fails, everything else fails. So how do you get out of you know, your own home and your local area and discover some of the growers in your area? How do you bring growing into your backyard, into the small space or a pot on your balcony? And how do you share that tomato or that cucumber with your neighbor? How do you get some chickens and grow some, you know, get some eggs and, you know, the retro suburbia movement that happens here in Australia. I don't know if a lot of people around the world understand this retro suburbia, but it's about bringing back the backyard that produces food and not just grass. You know, the lawn was the biggest kind of waste of space in subdivision of land. You know, where is that food forest? Bring back that back garden that nourishes your soul and your, and your, and your body and produces food that not only you get to consume or teach your kids or family or neighbours, um, but just really creates that space of learning and discovering. And it doesn't matter if the project doesn't even grow. Like it's just about planting the seed and seeing it germinate and learning from that experience and being really connected with your soil. I refer to myself now as a soil advocate. Like the more I discover and the more that I dig deeper into soil, the more I scratch my head and shake my head in not being under to understand how did we allow a model of this degradation to exist now you know I, I don't know i just i just cannot answer that question i think you know the more i understand it the more i realize that this is the only way forward and even if like even if it doesn't work like at least we know we've we've moved the, the planet forward in a much more um gentle nurturing caring way for our future uh, generations so as i mentioned before i work for a company called farming secrets and so helen and hugo set up farming secrets um several decades ago and they they've been in the ag space for 30 years their, their story starts that um you know hugo was a farm man farm boy he grew up on farms and he always had this interest in farming and um, he set up an ag shop. So he was actually providing farmers with supplies. And um, one day they were looking at the bucket of inputs and realized that there was a skull and bone symbol on it and it was referred to as poison. And they questioned and went, why are we putting poison on our food? And what happens to that when it goes into the soil and into the plant and you know, I would say that they were very early adopters in questioning this kind of way of farming and growing and, and the system. And so they sold out of this business and they started a seaweed uh, fertilizer business. And so that was the starting of trying to explore this world of more natural inputs, more natural ways of farming. And that was the wording that they used uh, was, you know, natural chemical free farming. And no one would understand what they were trying to do. They just were always kind of pigeonholed as though, oh, you're, yeah, no, that's cute. You're over there doing your little natural farming. And so they've stuck at it all these years. And so two years ago, um, our paths crossed, and maybe a little bit longer than that. And I was doing a little bit of marketing help. So my background is marketing and business. And so for me, you know, understanding the whole point of a farm being a profitable business and profits, that makes sense. And how to market your product and sell direct to consumer. Um, is all near and dear from my marketing brain. And then working with Helen and Hugo and, you know, putting marketing campaigns, talking about, you know, food nutrition and um, regenerative farming and holistic grazing and management and growing, you know, real wholesome foods made me realize that there was more impact that could be done with my two worlds of my passion for regenerative agriculture and marketing and business. And so the conversation with Helen and Hugo and Farming Secrets was, I want to be a lot more involved in this impactful journey that you're on. And what was really interesting and really admiring to me is that they resisted the amount of negativity that was put into this industry in the early days. And that resilience really showed that they were here for the long game. And so Helen and Hugo built this business when they're in their 60s and now in their 70s. 
And so I'm now part of their succession plan and to take the business on to the next generation. And that's why I'm really excited because over the last two years, we've really turned um, to digital. You know, uh, Helen and Hugo would record um, content and put it onto DVDs and ship it to farmers all around the world. This is before, you know, the original Netflix model was around because if you don't know, Netflix started as like a DVD um, hiring uh, subscription service. And so I was always like just blown away. I was like, what? You're burning DVDs of these farmers' secrets and sending it to all these farmers around the world so that way they could understand what farmers here in Australia and other parts of the world were doing. And I was just so uh, amazed by what they were doing every day to bring this new information to, to people because, you know, 10 years ago, farming farmers didn't have really good internet. We're not here in Australia anyway uh, and probably in other parts of the world as well. So now with technology catching up, the last 12 months at Farming Secrets, we've really just been fast-tracking, um, digitalizing all our courses, all our products, um, and really building a community. Because what I found really interesting is over the last two years, talking to farmers that are choosing to go down this regenerative agriculture movement is that they feel really alone and isolated. And I couldn't understand why. And being someone who's like connected to a lot of regen farmers and knowing that there's a lot of people out there wanting to do this, that they felt alone. And then, it, you know, speaking to more people, I realized that you decide to go regeneratively, but your neighbor next door where a fence line is dividing you is not regenerative. Um, and Gabe Brown has a lot of examples where his neighbors aren't regenerative and he is. And the difference to the soil and to the color of the grass and, you know, the drought tolerance and the flood tolerance. And, um, you know, it's along with his resilience as well to stick at it that is now creating these case studies of, you know, basically black and white, you know, your chalk and cheese. You can see the polar differences between being a regenerative agriculture farmer and really nourishing the soil health and feeding that organic matter and allowing that, you know, organic matter to build and hold the moisture and hold the nutrition and hold the soil together and keeping it covered uh, with grasses and native grasses and cover crops that protects the soil, the difference when you've got that fence line. Um, and so I say, you know, in a way, it's good that these farmers didn't follow because now we've got this case study of this is the way they did and this is the way we do it. But if they would have got on board 10 years ago, it would be better for the, the whole sake of the planet. But what's happening now is people are realizing, well, this is definitely a much better way to go. And farmers who stick at this and it's not an easy game you know I, I speak to farmers every day and there are moments where they just want to throw the towel and go back to the way that they used to know and you know their support network their neighbors are telling them just just throw the chemicals just put the npk just you know don't worry about saw tests that's all rubbish just look at the you know the product and are you are you yielding more than last year then you're 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 doing good and then they're looking at their bank balance and going but i can't make ends meet and so that really, you know, worried me that we have all these farmers who are trying to go down this regenerative agriculture pathway, but then they're not, they're not being supported by their physical neighbours. And so we created our virtual fence post and now, you know, Facebook community and our um, membership website to bring like-minded regenerative agriculture farmers and eaters and growers and whoever wants to jump on this regenerative movement um, a space where they can hang out and uh, be supported by our virtual neighbors. And so we run virtual classrooms and we have virtual, um, you know, with the use of Zoom and technology these days and, the, you know, the amount of people who have, you know, uptaken to this video technology over the years and you're sitting on a summit now, um, it, it means that we can get information to people quicker than ever um, before. And so that's where Farming Secrets is really kind of coming along now is in this space of being this regenerative support and mentor program with different courses and, and experts that can help get you through your regenerative journey. And as I mentioned before, it is not a destination. It is definitely a journey. And the biggest kind of outcome of success that I can see is when a student becomes a mentor. When that our membership website is called The Circle, and we've called it The Circle for a reason. And it's because when you come in as a student, you're at the start and you're learning and you're really exploring and then your farming hat comes on and you think, oh, maybe I can play around with this or maybe I can try this. And what happens is you start innovating and you create new things and, you know, um, 
you share that with the community and then you become a mentor and you're giving back to the community as well. And it's this never ending circle of regenerativeness that really is an exciting space for me um, with one of my values really being education, you know, being able to teach, you know, future generations the way that they can grow food and a way that it actually brings carbon back into the soil. And, you know, the studies are proving that we can reverse climate change by, you know, the carbon drawdown, um, you know, the amount of case studies that exist now with holistic grazing and seeing that, you know, the animals and the crops all need to work together in a holistic um, way and that one, 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 one thing's output is another thing's input, then this is a natural cycle. It's the way that Mother Nature intended it to be. The leaves fall from the tree, they decompose, they create compost, the worms come up, the moisture stays on the ground, it feeds the roots um, and it grow, goes back into the tree. Um, and that natural cycle is something that we can really observe on our farms as well. And it's not something that you can do overnight. You cannot say, I'm going to be a regenerative farmer and apply it to all your paddocks tomorrow. It's something that you need to really explore, work with a group of people, understand what your regen roadmap looks like. That's one of the things that we've been really um, focused on over the last 12 months is, is saying that your journey is going to be a little bit different than your neighbor's journey because you may have different business models. You may have different um, key metrics of, uh, of success. You know, maybe one farm has debt attached to their farm and profitability matters differently, can be less risky than another farmer who doesn't have debt attached to their farm. So it's not a one size fits all. And you really need to explore all the different possibilities that exist um, and um, work out what your regen roadmap uh, is. Now I'm just going to look at my notes just to make sure that I've covered everything that I have. So the only thing I wanted to leave you with today, and this is not just only with my presentation, and this was a little bit more of a, of a conversation. I just wanted to share my story, you know, what Farming Secrets is all about. And the fact that, you know, there are companies out there that have been championing this movement for decades. Really support those companies um, because everyone's now jumping on the bandwagon of this regen movement. And there's, you know, companies popping up everywhere. But there have been companies that have been doing this for, for decades. And you can look at, you know, a lot of the regen, regen principles. The original document that the regen principles are written on was type, it was written on a typewriter. And that's available online. Um, um, I believe, yeah. Um, and so one of the things I want to just um, leave you with is that um, you can't, like... One of the tips I give people when they attend summits like this, um, and this is not to you know, discredit any of the other presenters or, or anything, but don't believe anything you hear. Take it as inspiration and then go and dig deeper yourself because your own exploration down this topic is what's going to actually make you um, retain it. Um, it's, it's, it's what's going to make you um, understand how it applies to you. You can see it through your filter. And even with a lot of the stuff that I've said today, like take it with a grain of salt and go, oh, that was really interesting. Or I want to dig deeper on that. Or I never thought of regen as like a consumer point of view. I've always thought it's up to the farmers to regenerate our planet. You know, all these ideas go, no, nah, I don't believe you. I'm going to go explore this myself. You know, have a look at the principles of Regen Ag and just see where they came from. Um, don't let someone tell you. Go down and explore it yourself because that's really where the true learning happens and you get to apply it with your own filter. You know, download a, an ebook or go and download some guides that, you know, go on YouTube. There is so much information on YouTube. Um, and that's, you know, where it can get a little bit confusing and overwhelming. But the key is that you're going down your own journey and exploring what Regen means to you. You know, another program that I did about during COVID, uh, maybe about six or seven months ago, was a program by my mate, Josh Holiday, which is the Activated Humans Program. And that was all about living a regenerative lifestyle. It had nothing to do with, you know, um, you know, it was being an activated regenerative human. It's being, you know, so consciously aware that I want to sit on the ground and give a presentation. I don't need to sit in an environment of an office um, uh, 
um, or, or, or things like that. Like it's it's it was these these are the things that I'm doing differently because one door opens another window, which then opens another door, and these opportunities kind of present themselves. And you know that was you know I, I played a lot around journaling and meditation, um, stillness. I also met um, uh, Warren Roberts from Yarn Australia, which is a First Nation. Um, training organization and we sit down once a month and have a yarn and talk about um, first nation principles and you know just being more connected with the land the origins the way that soil works um everything becomes a building block on top of that and i truly do believe that we are all connected uh, we got to think of our planet as like a tv screen that's a sphere you know each atom is a pixel and so there is actually no, there is actually nothing stop, like there's nothing not connecting me to that leaf that's above there because there is atoms of oxygen from this cheek to that. And so technically that leaf is connected to me. Um, and when we realize that we are all connected and that this sphere of the planet is one wholeness, then it's really hard to poison that tree and kill that leaf because that's connected to me. And the vibration of that leaf and the wind and the air and the sun, it's all atoms together. We just can't see some of them. So we think that there's a disconnect between me and the leaf. But when you realize that there is actually atoms of oxygen and hydrogen and everything else in between, there's actually a connection. There's a connection between me, where I am in the planet, and you, wherever you are. And that's powerful. That's something that you can't, I don't know, when you go down this pathway of discovering this, you can't unlearn it. And you just wouldn't throw something out your car window. You wouldn't throw a cigarette butt on the ground when you know that that is connected to you. Um, and so this is the principles that we need to teach our future generations. And this is the mission that we're on at Farming Secrets is to in continually empower people to understand this regenerative movement and this regenerative agriculture. Uh, and it's not just about the food and that we farm, it's about the choices of what we buy, what we um, consume um, and, you know, supply versus demand, the marketing 101. Without a demand, there is no supply. And so we need to demand regenerative really grown foods in our supermarkets. And then the supermarkets will deliver because without us, there is no them. And so, <laughs> you know, we definitely do have the power to steer the ship in the direction um, that that we we want to go um awesome so i think on that note i um we'll, we'll slowly wrap up if you want to discover more about farming secrets uh, it is at farmingsecrets.com we've got loads of resources on our website freebie down downloads uh, our 10 must do's to you know farming regeneratively and profitably is available on our website as well uh, we have lots of, uh, you know, we have a fortnightly newsletter that goes out sharing all goods of goodies around regen um, and regen jokes. And we try and have as much fun as we possibly can uh, with it. We also have courses. So if there's like um, areas of topics that you want to dig deeper into, um, then there's some courses that we can help you go through and uh, start your regen. And then we have our Farming Secrets community, which we call our Circle Membership. Um, and that is a great place to start if you want to plug in to a community of like-minded individuals. We have a fortnightly virtual classroom where we speak about all things regen. We bring in guest speakers and we also just, um, you know, we do soil challenges. We share different um, bits of information. We, we think, we innovate, we, uh, we collaborate um, and we support each other through our own regen uh, journey, whether that be on a pot. Uh, on a balcony in an apartment or whether that be, you know, thousands of hectares and acres of land uh, transitioning a farm uh, for our future generations. It's all uh, possible because soil works the same. doesn't matter where you are in the world. The principles of regen apply uh, anywhere. Um, and so it is definitely a global uh, language and something that uh, you can plug into without, you know, wherever you are. So, I encourage you to go down this regen journey, whatever that looks like for you. Remember, don't believe anything I've told you or any of the other speakers. Uh, go into your own research and come up to your own conclusions and be 
the light that Regen needs. Share and learn out loud because it's when you teach others that you actually retain the information more and become a beam of light to heal our planet. So on that note, I thank you very much for giving me your undivided attention during this presentation. And thank you very much for this amazing summit. Um, this is definitely something that's near and dear with us. The more people who um, discover regenerative ag and regenerative lifestyle, the more um, that we can save um, our soils and, and, and build some really amazing projects together. So uh, with that, thank you very much. And I wish you all the best on your regen journey. And until next time we meet again, remember to dig deeper into your soil health. Thank you. I'm Ray Miladoni from Farming Secrets.